All right, guys. Welcome to tonight's uh, uh, leadership training, guys. We want to talk about um, you know the industry that we're in. We want to talk about the importance of understanding the industry that we are in, and what we're uh, going to share tonight is that, guys. I've been in this industry for about 17 years, on and off, and we want to share through the years on what we've learned, right? The magnitude of what this industry can bring uh, uh, compared to corporate America. And Harvard, you know, what better than Harvard Business School to do a review on direct sales and uh, multi-level marketing or network marketing, right? And it's pretty cool, guys. You can actually take a look. This article is uh, credited to the Harvard, Harvard Business School. Network marketing is being taught at more than 200 different colleges, including Harvard Business School. After extensive research in the network marketing industry, Harvard Business School has developed three different criteria that a network marketing company has been in order to make it a, a very most desirable opportunity, right? So these three things are, number one, the company must be at least 18 months old, okay? They say most companies that go through that period either make it or, or they break it, right? So the company must be at least 18 months old. Number two, the company must have a product or service that is highly consumable, right? Um, having a product is highly consumable means repeated repeated sales, right? Um, that it's a, a residual or ongoing, thereby guaranteeing customer loyalty versus a one-time sale and having to source new customers, all right? Number three, it needs to be a ground floor opportunity. Harvard Business School suggests that in order for the opportunity to qualify as a ground floor, uh, as, as ground floor, the number of existing reps must be less than 1% of the total population of the country where the company is operating. Obviously here in the United States, uh, this figure is equal to 1.5 million people. If the company has less than 100,000 distributors, right, or representatives, Harvard Business School considers it to be a once in a lifetime opportunity, guys. Listen to what I said there. If the company has less than 100,000 distributors, right, Harvard Business School considers it to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. But if it was um, 500,000 or less, right, 1% uh, of the population, they considered a ground floor opportunity. But if it was less than 100,000, what's considered a once in a lifetime opportunity. So if you take a look in, in consideration, in addition, Harvard Business School states that there are four distinct stages of growth in a network marketing company, right? And they are as follow. Number one is the foundation of the company. This usually lasts approximately six months and is where a company develops its products and marketing plan, right? Which we know uh, the company's been around uh, long enough to get past that point. Number two, concentration. This period lasts approximately two to four years from where the distributor network is started, okay? So that's like building the momentum going into it, right? So then when you hit the momentum period, number three, this is the period that lasts two to four years also. This is when the company experiences phenomenal growth, right? And uh, distributorships, uh, the distributorships, businesses explode, right? They call it the massive momentum. It is during this period that the company virtually sweeps the nation. When a company sales reach $50 million, it reaches what is called critical mass, right? So all the top companies that we see, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook, they go through something like this, which we're gonna talk about, something like the S-curve. Sales go vertically right off the graph or what they call right off the chart. So for example, we've all heard of the, um, health and wellness company called Herbalife, right? Herbalife reached $50 million, okay, in business. Sales jumped to $151 million, right? So that's an extra um, $101 million in just 12 months. In one year time frame, they added over 800,000 new distributors or representatives to their organization. Now, say an organization is producing a bonus check right, a residual check in amount of $1,000 per month, right, just $1,000 per month. And Jarvis and I, and we always talk about this, in the industry, the hardest number to reach is 1000 okay? But let's say you're, you're producing $1,000 a month. When the company reaches critical mass, right, listen to this, 
distributors automatically experience a tenfold increase, right, in their earnings. In other words, if you were making $1,000 per month, right, per month, that becomes 10,000 per month because of that critical mass standpoint, right? This is the reason for getting involved on the ground floor so you'll experience the benefits of explosive growth. Guys, do you understand why we always talk about the excitement of the industry that we're in, but timing and positioning is very key? So exactly what it states there, when it hits critical mass, tenfold increase in your business and in your earnings. Number four, stability. This is the period that, the, that lasts for the life of the company, right? This is like the Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook, Nikes, right? The companies that we know of now, right? that the life of the company, a network marketing company that is dedicated to the success of its distributors or representatives will experience longevity, right? Thereby ensuring that an active distributorship will realize continued earnings growth, right? These are the, the, the brothers and the sisters of our industry, the companies that have been around 50, 60 years, right? So based on this data, the people that are preaching about waiting until a company is four years old typically loses out on the true high dollar position, right? If you are not in by year four, you will make money, but the individuals that lock their position in, right, make substantially much more money because of their positioning. Timing and positioning is very, very key. And again, this was done by Harvard Business School, all right? And these are true statistics here. Okay, so diving right into it, what is the S curve in business? See, there's a gentleman, he's a world economist by the name of Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker breaks down how businesses, the growth happens, where there is dips and valleys, right? Every company has it. But see, they understood that every company goes through something called formulation or what we know better term of pioneering stage, right? And every company typically between a three to five year mark right, goes through what they call a pioneering stage where they're trying to get the marketing out, they're trying to get their name out there. So a better example, we hear today a new restaurant opened up, right? And then maybe a, a year or two down the road, right, it disappears is because they didn't make it through the pioneering stage. Now, if you take a look at the red arrow, the red arrow, and it says we are here, right? Well, if you actually take a look at the company that we're part of today, okay, in 2019, right, with the company that we're a part of today, we are at about $50 million, right, a little less than $60 million in revenue as a whole, right, as a company in this country, okay? So if you put that in place of exactly where we're at in this S-curve in business, we're exactly where that star is at, okay? This is where you want to be in where they call it a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So now when you see where that blue arrow hits, that point right there is typically where the company hits about 150,000 reps of that company. That's where critical mass hits. And that's where about when that company is doing about a hundred million dollars in sales, which we know we're less than 60, but we're getting, we're moving towards that guys. This is where the time where you want to start building your organization, building your team, locking your positions in because once that company hits that blue dot, okay, that's where critical mass hits. And see, when critical mass hits, right, see the arrow of momentum, right? Remember that tenfold in business? Guys, companies end up hitting that momentum stage where I should have put here, but this is the breakdown of the S-curve in business that 80% of the wealth of that company is done in that momentum stage, critical mass stage, right? So 80% of the wealth, that's where millionaires are created, right? That's where the people that got in um, at the early stage, which we'll talk about here in a second, the innovators, right? Got in at the early stage that actually cap, you know, that they basically capitalize on the growth of that company, right? So 80% of the growth of the company happens during this momentum, but 80% of the revenue, right? The wealth of this company happens in this momentum. So where you want to be plugged in is that where that star is at, where exactly where in our company is exactly where we're planted, okay? Now you have from now until 150,000, which we know we have less than 45,000 reps in our company, right? Why we're super excited, okay? Once that uh, hit that blue dot, it's where you're hitting critical mass 
and that's where they say about 150,000. So we're less than half of 150,000. From now until then, guys, it's time to build, 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 and expose and expose and expose because once critical mass, that tenfold can happen for every single one of us, right? And that's why we're excited. But once it hits stabilization, stabilization, right, is where now the company's peaked out, right? There, it's average about two to four percent, and two to four percent is there where the profit margin is at. Now, do people make the most money at the beginning or at the ground floor, or do they make the most money at the end? And so we all know timing and positioning where people got in at the ground floor is where they maximize the compensation, right? Because of momentum and critical mass. So you understand that aspect. This is the key, right, to success for many people in network marketing has been to be position themselves within the company before it moves to momentum phase, right? That's exactly where we're at, where that star is at, guys. So what I want to do is bring on another gentleman that is no, uh, he's, he, he's been a student of this industry and he's not new to this industry and he has a tons of knowledge. You know, I have the utmost respect for this individual. You know, he's been in the industry for about eight years. So he definitely understands the, the magnitude of what network marketing has to bring to the table and what makes it so different than corporate America and why it gives everybody the same platform, the same opportunity to go out there and do some phenomenal things. So what I want to do is remove myself and bring on none other, uh, Mr. Jarvius Wright. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Mr. Bobby Kim, thank you for doing an amazing job. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you're listening in on what my colleague, Mr. Bobby Kim, just showed you, um, he basically gave you a breakdown of what this industry looks like up front. This, this is the DNA of the industry. And when you understand not what you've become a part of, but actually what you're involved in, it makes a big, 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 big difference because all of the messages in the industry sound similar. You'll never ever go to an opportunity meeting that didn't intrigue you. But if you don't know what we're showing you right here, you'll end up just getting involved in something that sounds good, what sounds good and was great at one time, but it's just not great for you at the moment because the time has passed. But when you understand this, you know, when you look at an opportunity, if the timing is right, or if you, just, if you should just pass up on this one. So when you look at this chart right here, this right here basically shows you who you are when it comes to foresight on business. And what this tells us in this graph is, as an innovator, now I want you to listen at that word innovator. That means you are a person that sees things before it is cool to the masses of people. You have the foresight to see something before it actually takes place. And if God has given you that gift, that's a, special, that, that, that's a special gift and you need to use it. So what it tells us is 2.5% of people normally sees an opportunity in its early stages when they have not figured out everything yet when the company is still going through its changes, they're growing. When they're still trying to get their marketing material, trying to figure out the best ways to get this out to the masses. See, most people will think that this part is too risky. But what they don't understand that this is the best time to make money. You want to get in and grow through the changes with the company, not get in when it's A-OK. -okay. So this is when 2.5% of people say, yes, I want in right now. I want to be in with all the changes. I want to see what's happening. I want to be able to tell the story of when we were not all good, right? Then you move to the second phase of the early adopters. This is when 13.5% of people look at an opportunity. And these people are really upset because they didn't get a glimpse at the company when this first 2.5% did. So they say, dang it, man, where was I? How did I miss this? It's no way that a company can have a product and a service as such, and I myself, I've missed it. So they jump in right away 
because they, they, they realize what they're looking at, there's something special there. So they jump in right away, knowing that they've missed when the company first launched. They don't want to miss anymore, okay? Then when you go to this third phase, this is the early majority. These are the people that need social proof. They can still see what the company offers. They can see the, pro they, they, they can see the process. They can see everything and it looks good. But it's something in the inside of them that says, you know what, I'm just not ready yet. There's just not enough people yet. I gotta see some cars being wrapped. You know, I gotta see signs up. I gotta see marquees up. I gotta go to some meetings where there's thousands of people. That'll make me feel safe before I bring this to my network of people because I myself feel like the company's gonna be around for a very long time right now. But with the early majority, don't realize is the other 15 to 16 percent of people they have lined their pockets by bringing people in helping other people help others and they've captured mass majority of the growth that the company is going to go through this is what this third phase of people don't quite get yet they don't have the foresight and the mental capacity that first 15 to 16 percent of people have right but they see it now a lot of people are doing it and they say you know what i want in as well because it's safe now then you move to the late majority this is where the other 34 percent of people now these are the people here that just want to get involved and say that hey i was a part of the company too they don't get business at all but they know it's cool, it's helping people, and they just wanna be able to say, hey, I got in on that company as well, right? They're not studying anything else, they just wanna be a part of it, and there's nothing wrong with those people, right? Then you move on to the laggards. Now, these are the people that will invest in cell phones right now today. They have no clue about business. Nothing wrong with these people now. They just don't understand what my colleague, Mr. Bobby Kemp, explained in the first two charts. They don't get that part of business. And these are the people that are joining these massive, amazing companies that have laid the foundation for us in the network marketing industry. All of those companies that have been around 50, 60, 70, 80 years, and they're joining those, pe those companies right now, those are laggards. It sounded good to them when they went to the presentation. They understood that the company was doing billions in revenue, but they don't understand that now that the company is doing billions, that's less for them because they've capped out, they've stabilized, and they're only going to go two to four percent for the duration of their company. They are just going to get in because it was brought to them. So this is what it looks like when you look at an opportunity. Are you an innovator? Are you an early adopter? Are you the early majority? Are you the late majority? Or are you a lack? Okay, so now this year, it kind of gives me goosebumps because I'm gonna tell you why. This is the current $1 billion club. Now, you know those companies that I was just talking about on the last uh, slide that have laid the foundation of our industry? You're looking at some of them right now. Amway, founded in 1959, ladies and gentlemen, 1959. Back in 2013, they were doing 11.8 billion in revenue. Here it is, 2019, and I think they're doing somewhere around 13 to 14 billion. Now you're talking about six years later, only jumped a couple billion. That's a lot of revenue, but it shows you how companies stabilize once they reach that billion in that particular market. Okay, but what I really want you to pay attention to was how long. It took them to reach a billion, I mean, to, to reach a billion dollar company. They were founded in 1959. They didn't reach a billion till, they were, uh, till it was 1980. Look at the time frame, right? Then you go down to Avon, another amazing company. Have helped a ton of people. 9.9 .9 billion in revenue they're doing. They were founded in 1886. Look when they reached a billion, 1972. Do you see the time frame? Herbalife, another amazing company. 
was doing 4.8 billion in revenue, right? They were founded in 1980. Look at when they reached the billion, 2004. I'll go down one or two more to a couple that are very familiar. Mary Kay, 3.6 billion, founded in 1963. 1996, they reached a billion. The amazing new skin, 3.1 billion, founded in 1984. That was a great year because that's when I was born. I love to talk about that one. They hit a billion in 2004. Now, just a quick story about new skin. There was a lady that got into New Skin just shy of two years before they hit market momentum. This lady had somewhere in the neighborhood of around 3,000 reps in her business before they hit market momentum. Remember that tenfold increase that my, my colleague spoke about on one of his charts? Two years into market momentum, that young lady had 30 thousand reps in her business she went from three thousand to thirty thousand in just under two years that's what market momentum looks like for us as being um a, a pioneers now pioneering is a, a scary thing for most people but i can tell you if you're able to do something before it's cool to the masses you can really 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 generate generational wealth for you and your family. So this is what the current $1 billion uh, looks like. Um, now we'll move on to the tell the ticket. Potential history has a way of repeating itself, right? Now, you heard me just speak about Amway. They were founded in 1959. Remember when my colleague also told you that within that four-year mark, either the company is going to reach a, a $50 million and move into the place to where we can now move into massive market momentum, or you got to get into this company before the first 150,000, 100,000 to 150,000 um, reps. If not, you're going to risk missing a big, big, big opportunity, right? Well, Amway has 4.2 million distributors. If you knew what me and my colleague was talking about right now in terms of positioning and timing, and we told you you need to be in within the first 150,000 or before the first billion in whatever market you're in, do you think you would join a company that has 4.2 million distributors? No, you will not. Doesn't make it not a, not so good of a company. It's just that the timing is wrong, right? Look at Newski, founded in 1984. They have 800,000 distributors. Okay, do you think it's a good time to get in? I, I don't know, right? I, I don't know. Do you have a massive market of people that are already following you? Yes, you can get inside of a company right now and go blitz if you have a, a, a large following. But for the average person, these things need to be on your side. If it's going to give you the opportunity and, and, a, and a better chance to create generational wealth for you and your family. Then you look at Tupperware. Founded in 1945, they have 2.6 million reps. Again, do you think this is a good time to join this company? No matter the marketing, no matter the opportunity that's laid in front of you, based off the facts of timing, do you think it's a good idea? We can agree to agree to say, no, it's just not the best idea. And it's okay to say in the sense that I missed that dance. I missed that dance. So this is what it looks like when you're talking about opportunity. I get goosebumps when I think about it because everybody that's taking a look at this amazing company that we have, all of these things that we just mentioned, it's on your side, right? 90% of people miss that shot at that company that has grounded themselves and paved the way for us and they have no idea why they didn't make it. They went to the trainings. They were on the webinars. They made the phone call. They prospected kneecap to kneecap. They did everything they needed to do. And then they got out and they said, you know what? That industry sucks. I gave it my all and I still didn't succeed. The sad part is they haven't had a chance to come into contact with individuals like us on this line to say, hey, look, it's not the industry, man. It's not you. You just didn't have time on this side. 
you missed that dance. All those people that got in within the first 150,000 to 500,000, I guarantee you they'll all give you a different story. And the common theme would be, we got in at a great time. So this is what it looks like. Um, Mr. Bob Kim, is there anything else that you want to share before I go to the highest grossing billion dollar industry in the world? This one here really gets me pumped up, okay? Because oftentimes, especially the early person that lacks knowledge on our industry, they get beat up out in the field. Ah, oh, is it one of those things or ah, oh, scam way or I don't want to hear about that industry. And their posture isn't strong enough to say, well, what do you mean? Scamway, you're talking about the company that owns the arena that the Orlando Match is playing? What, what, what did you say? Yes, that company that you just called Scamway, they own, that's their arena, right? And they, and, and they begin to, to, to let their guard down and then you can begin to educate people on what it looks like out here, okay? The NFL does $9.5 billion a year. The music industry does $16.5 billion a year. Organic products does $91 billion. The movie industry does $80 billion. The gaming industry does $67 billion. And this is something that most people participate in and they don't expect anything back. And they are the reason that these industries are grossing as much as they're grossing, right? But people, for some reason, skip over network marketing because of the name. And it's dressed in overalls and seems like a little bit of work. But it does $167 billion a year. Now, let me give you a little bit of education on this $167 billion. Most people will say, oh, it's one of those things where the people at the top makes all the money. Well, do you know out of that 167 billion, only 5% of that income goes to million dollar earnings? 5% of that 167 billion goes to million dollar earners. That this is the only thing they do, right? The other 95% goes to people that have jobs and they want just in case money. Just in case money. It is the opposite of what people think in this industry. Listen, as my colleague, who's one of the top earners, not in this company, but the industry, if he was the guy that was earning all of the money, he wouldn't have a team of people. It does not work that way in this industry. The triangle is upside down. The pyramid is upside down. CEO, 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 and you can pass the person that got you involved. There's no cap on your income. So most of the income is going out to people that want just in case money. It is a big miss that all of the income is going to the person at the top. And if that was the case, that all of the money is going to the person at the top, I will respectfully say, well, hey, I will be one of those people because I got in early. Right? So that's how that goes. But this is what this looks like. This is an amazing profession. And especially when it's done right, there's nothing else better to be a part of. But make sure you know that the most participating market of network marketing that does the most allows you to share part in. It's not something that you're just giving to and not receiving. What you do is predicated, I mean, your paycheck is predicated off of what you do and it reflects in that number. So, that's my portion. Uh, I hope it was beneficial to you all. You're on mute, Bobby. You're on mute, Bobby. You're on mute. Awesome, awesome, guys. So really quick, I'm gonna end it on this, this last thing here, just, just so you know, right? Last year, we're in a gig economy, right? Gig, everybody looking for a side gig, right? So pay attention to this, we're gonna end it on this. 80% of people last year were looking for some type of side gig, right? And what that means is that 
um, these big companies like Uber, Lyft, and Amazon, okay, they produced the most 1099s year to date, right, last year than all of network marketing combined. So what that tells you is that there's a lot of people out there looking for an opportunity, okay, and 80% of those individuals statistically shown that they were only looking to make about $500 to $1,000 a month. So remember, in the gig economy, right, people that wanted to go drive Lyft and Uber and do Amazon, they were only looking to make an extra $500 to $1,000 a month. Then you have the 15%, right? The 15% of people were looking for supplemental income. Someone that's looking to make three, four, five thousand dollars a month, right? Three, four, five thousand a month, 15%. But remember, 80% were just looking to make that extra income to pay down their credit card, pay off their student loans, whatever the case may be. Then you got the 5%. The 5% are people like us, the innovators, the people that got in at the ground floor, that position that wanted to make this a multiple six-figure business or multiple seven-figure business, and because they knew they were at timing and position before critical mass, right? 5% of those individuals, right, are looking to cap, you know, the big capture the market, right? So always remember, guys, we are in a gig economy. What that stands for is that 80% of the economy are looking to make just some extra income. Please be a student of the industry. That's all I've been. That's all Jarvis has been. That's all we've been doing is being a student in the industry. Understand the magnitude of what network marketing brings to the table, right? So when people talk about that thing or that pyramid, guys, it's produced the most millionaires in this entire world, right? This industry has produced the most millionaires in the world. Another great statistic, 82% of women that make over six figures, 82% of women that make over six figures do it in this industry, guys. So become a student in the industry, become a professional, like Eric Roy says, go pro. Thank you guys so much. We'll see every single one of you guys at the top or from it. Have a good night.